Hey everybody, it's Chad with Nobody Else's Auto. Let's see if we get a connection here. We're having some issues with uh, dropping our connection, so we'll see if we can hang in there. Anyway, the uh, weather is absolutely not cooperating with us here in Kansas right now. It uh, Today was nasty. Got a little bit of snow flurries, tons of wind, tons of cold. It may have gotten above freezing today, but it didn't get very far above freezing today. So we've uh, been fighting with that and uh so obviously it makes it a little tough to get much from the yard today especially when we're bucking all that wind so anyway still want to bring something neat tonight uh looked around the shops found something kind of different um something that's kind of starting to get collectible once again like some of the things we talk about on here cool stuff for your shop or your man cave that doesn't always have to break the bank but still a great conversation piece so and some stuff that's starting to fall into that area, um, although some of the bigger pieces are starting to get fairly pricey, um, is old test equipment. The stuff they used to use back in the shops in the 40s and the 50s to work on stuff. They make great display pieces. You can set up an old sun tester next to your car while you've got it in your garage just because it looks cool in case your buddies come by and want to check it out. Neat stuff like that. So that type of stuff is starting to become collectible. But there's still a lot of cool stuff you can get in that genre that doesn't break the bank. And the other cool thing about some of that testers and things like the tools they used back in the day is you learn a lot about the technology that was happening back then. You know, we look at the stuff we have on today's vehicles, and there's a lot of modern conveniences we think about on today's vehicles. A lot of that stuff has been around for years. You know, you, you hit your radio and hit seek to find the next radio station. Buick had that in 1950. I think Buick and Cadillac both had that in 1950. By the mid-50s, you could get a signal-seeking radio. And you say, well, I got a button on my steering wheel now I push. Well, they had one on the floor. You tapped it with your toe, and it would seek out the next station. Nothing new. 70-year-old technology almost. Granted, it's a lot quicker. It's electronic. But that came out 70 years ago. By the mid-50s, you could get a, a new car with signal-seeking radio, power windows, power seat, power locks, air conditioning. A lot of this stuff that we think of today as a modern convenience, you could get back then. And one of the interesting things that also came out in the, in the early to mid-50s was what was called the Autronic Eye. You think you, a car's coming at you in today's world, your headlights automatically dim. That came out in the 50s. That's what we're going to show you tonight. I've got a piece of test equipment, actually a new stock piece of test equipment for what GM called the Atronic Eye. And it was available in everything, all, all the way down from your, your lowly Chevrolet up to your Cadillac. I think, you know, I think it was probably standard in Cadillacs. About every Cadillac you see from the mid-50s had it. But once in a while, you'll even see it in a Chevrolet. So let's flip around here, take a look at the piece we've got today. The Guide Atronic Eye Tester. So, if your uh, headlights were not dimming when you had oncoming traffic, you took it to your GM dealer, and they would get this out and uh, check it out for you. Let's see what we got inside of this. The Kenton War Guide Atronic Eye Tester Model 10. We look down here in the corner, and it's got a form number 52-193. I know sometimes when you look at print stuff, I'm guessing that might be the year, and that would be about right 52 because... By 53, you were starting to see some of these electronic eyes, so that would have been correct for that era. I've never tried to use this. Don't know a thing about it, but it was super cool. Uh, bought it at an old Chevrolet dealership auction is where I found it at. The Guide Atronic Eye Sensitivity Tester. So obviously, you've got to uh, cal calibrate this for oncoming traffic. Let's look at our gauge here. Zero settings, tinted, and clear. So you had two uh, different settings, obviously, if you had a tinted glass or clear windshield. So it's kind of weird to think about, but that was all had to be to set that right. That's what you had to have. Increase your settings. See all what we've got in here. That's kind of a cool looking little gauge. I bet this actually sat on top of the unit. These were dash mounted units. So I bet this piece here would have sat on the unit and that's how you would have leveled the eye itself. Let's 
some other little piece of test equipment there. Oh, that's what hooked to your meter so you can calibrate it. We've still got our paperwork in here. Let's see what this shows us. Operating structures for the tool. There, if we look closely, yeah, that is what that little piece is for. If you look on here, you see this unit right here. This is the piece that actually mounted on the dash of your car. And that's what would read or see the oncoming light. Therefore, it would, that it would, then it would dim your headlights for you. So, we'll see what else this is. It's all brand new, so it's still kind of stiff. But there's all the instructions on how to use it, the sensitivity test and adjustment. And back to the final stages. So, kind of a cool piece. You know, not, you know, this test equipment is not super exciting. You can't put it on your wall like a big fancy sign. But they're great display pieces to display with your car. Whether you're at a car show, whether you're just parking it in your garage and you want to make it look different for when your buddies come over and it looks cool. So, like I said, this old test equipment is starting to become pretty collectible. A lot of this stuff can still be picked up without having to break the bank, um, especially some of these smaller pieces. Um, so, they're cool pieces. They're still part of history. They're still part of why we do this, why we like old cars, and what we do with them as far as display and showing them and things like that you know original box original sticker just you know just i don't think it was ever used so there again the most exciting piece we've ever showed you but a cool piece and like i said excuse me when we're out bucking the wind and stuff today i went out to the yard to check some parts and uh we didn't want to do anything live out there today i don't think you could have heard me i think it was too windy and when it's about 30 degrees with a 20 mile an hour wind, it would have been a really short episode. So yeah, we skipped on that, found this cool piece tonight, something different. Like I said, it's not as exciting as a big, huge porcelain sign, but it's cool. It's different. There's a lot of things that we don't think about anymore. These modern conveniences we see today and that we're used to, or a lot of them are old. You know, obviously they didn't have backup cameras back then, but a lot of the normal conveniences that we're used to on today's cars have been around for 50, 70, 50, 60, 70 years. So it's cool to see old equipment like this to bring us back to that, remind us of where today's technology came from and what got us here today. And old pieces of test equipment like that. And the other thing about this little piece we talked, showed you tonight, it's not a big bulky piece. It's cool on the shelf, great conversation piece. You know, if you're sitting around with your buddies and somebody pulls off the shelf and says, what the heck is this thing? You start looking at it. If they don't think it's cool, you probably need new buddies because it's still cool because it's directly related to what we do and why I hope you're here with us right now is because you like this stuff and it's cool and you enjoy it. So anyway, we will see you Friday. Um, just hang in there with us, put more stuff up on YouTube. Uh, be sure to check us out and uh, subscribe over there if you would. And uh, take a look what we've got going on over there, too. Uh, I'm posting some of the videos off the Nobody Else's auto page on there also. So be sure to check that out. And once again, thanks for being here with us. Um, always super excited when you guys take a few minutes out of your day to hang out with us. And uh, like I said, if there's stuff you want to see, just let me know. If I've, if I've got something, if I know of something, if there's somebody I know may have what you want to see or want to talk about, I'll go see if I can get a hold of them. We'll do it. It's uh, like I said, this is uh, you know about as more about you guys and what you guys want to see versus me. I'm just having fun doing it, and I'm glad that you guys like uh, step stopping by and taking a few minutes out of your day to hang out with us. So we will see you on Friday. Thanks for being here, and thanks for watching.